Bye. <laughs> so one day you know, it was like it was like this was an honor. They would say that you got to clip Barbage's uh, toenails, right? So I was asked one day to, to do this. And then it's just a great honor you could do this by saying. So you know, he puts he's not even he's just sort of talking, no, 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 go ahead, it's all right, just, just do it. So but there was I mean there was there was nothing to clip. There, there, there was, there was somebody must have done maybe a half hour before or something because they <laughs> totally they couldn't get anything. In, you know, <laughs> so, so I go, I go to it. Oh man, oh man, I can't do that. And there's nothing there. And I'm thinking I gotta do something. So I just sort of faked it. You know, like the funny me, I got just a, a thin, thin sliver of a, of a toenail and cut it off. And, and then I was just still going on. If I look slow. Good job, I was saying. And he goes, oh, <laughs> didn't do a thing. But uh, I don't know what the, what the lesson is. I guess you've got to fake it sometimes. But, uh, I think I was set up, right? <laughs> it's all a set up. <laughs> yeah. And it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what for, but yeah, yeah. it's all set up. Did he give out any other mantras besides Om Namah Shivaya to different people based on different things that were going on in their lives? Yeah, yeah. He gave out uh, mantras you know, for a variety of uh, things. He, um, yeah. You know any of those? Did he do that? Yeah, I mean the most common one is the Triamco for the, uh, which is the healing mantra, which is which we. Uh, and then, but most of the other ones were um, were uh, um, specific and uh, um, intended for the individual and or for appropriately. So, I was given a mantra for a healing process called Jara, and uh, so um, usually in those moments, those were whispered, uh, and uh, Babaji said. Write it down. So, um, yeah, those tend not to be shared uh, casually in, in the community. Um, the uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing about the mantras is that is that uh, some of these shlokas, as they're called, the phrases in the arti, are um, uh, are said at the hovering of the fire ceremony. And that, in some ways, it's a uh, kind of a sign of the universality and the depth of those slokas of those particular sayings. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Dev, Om Maheshwara. You know, those are, that's just very... Why do you ask? Just curious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had, I had uh, studied Buddhism for before I met Babaji. And... Um, so, uh, Vipassana of uh, Buddhism is basically, yeah, there's an interpretation, but the way they, they present it is basically about meditation. You know, you know some path from meditation, meditation, meditation. So I was wondering, you know, when I went there, it's like, where's the meditation? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so, um, I mean, the other things were great, you know, to add to your life, but so I asked Babaji about, um, I can't remember how I said it, um, what is what about meditation, Babaji? And he gave me a mantra then. Mm -hmm. So I um, that's usually what I do. Were there specific ways to use the mantra, or is it just repeated, repeated, repeated? Um, not I mean, once there was a question asked, do you say Om Namah Shivaya fast or slow? And in the moment, uh, the an Baba's answer was, I do it quickly. Um, but uh, that was always provisional. Um, I think that the uh, the sensibility uh, around this tradition that I have, whether it's right or wrong, is that. Um, and the context of this is that Babaji would would give me different practices. And they, they were never kind of in a straight line. Well, I'll do this. Go down, sit and stand in the river at 4 o'clock in the morning for an hour. I mean, who wants to do that? <laughs> or, you know, and uh, 
then I then it, it would you know it would change radically you know it's, um, but uh, so, so that's the context but the the the, the thing about this tradition that is meaningful for me is that actually Babaji was always throwing you back to your own authority. Uh, he was not a guru who took people's authority or power, uh, rather somebody who was always trying to get you uh, into that space of loving yourself enough and being clear enough to be asking yourself. So, <clears throat> so the, the use of the mantra and the other thing for me, the RT is an extended mantra. And a lot of times, I mean, especially early on, it was, it was like, well, you're singing to this external deity, or you're singing it out in, in, like, a, in a, uh, like a choir, you're singing out. Um, uh, and people complain, well, you have to do RT twice a day. But really, this RT is so beautiful to experience in our bodies. And so you don't, and I, my mother used to come, so you know, and she always said, well, why are you singing this stuff that you don't even understand the words to? And uh, I said, well, just, just try to hum along and see how it feels. And after a time she said, oh, okay, I get this. And uh, so, uh, yeah, to me it's a remarkable thing to be able to feel that RT uh, in our bodies, uh, almost sung to ourselves as a transformative mantra of transformation and almost transmutation of clearing and letting go. So to me, it's a, uh, I mean, I, it, it, it itself is a powerful, very powerful meditation practice. Sometimes I would sit in RT and, I mean, to this day, I had this experience that he's talking about. It's, just, it's like cleansing of the whole body for me and, and into a state of oneness or, and vibratory. And I remember the first time this particularly, particular thing happened was when I opened my eyes and we were out, out sitting in the out on the patio because it was monsoon. It wasn't raining, but it was very, very hot. So we sat out on the patio and Baba was up on a green bench out there and I, I opened my eyes and I saw Babaji and I saw him really just uh, transform into golden light. And, uh, and I don't know what my body was looking like but certainly feeling very vibrant, high vibration. And I've had that experience here too with the mood. When I'm really just in RT, not trying to do anything, just being in RT. And I also like love, I, I feel like it's a gift. Sometimes I'm very tired and not feeling so great. And it's like, oh, I just want to go to bed. But then I also realize that the most healing thing and the way to put me back into shape is by attending the auntie. The Baba gave us this morning and evening as a practice to yeah, heal ourselves and to come into that space of oneness with, with him and the, the cosmos. Great book. And I, I think Babaji also really liked meditation in action, which is our karma yoga, right? And it seems easier to have those experiences chanting. Um, and, and it's probably harder when your mind's engaged, you know, um, in some kind of intellectual work. Well, maybe. But, um, but the physical work sometimes lends itself to that. So I, I had one clear experience I still go back to when I try to get in that zone, and I was cleaning the temple in Yarakon, so it's easier to have it there. <laughs> but I just, I could just total feel that, that total flow, like I feel it like, like in, in, well, for me, it's meditation is kind of the, the gauge, but, you know, I just could feel this, my, my, my mind and my spirit, and, and just in sync with everything, you know, while I was doing, I thought, that's it, that's what he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. You know, that the action, the, 
you know, it, it's a little, it's a lot harder to do it <coughs> moving, you know, and it's not to mention there are real people around there, so it makes it easier to do it there too, but um, that space, you know, um, keeping, keeping, uh, as a Buddhist term, really, like holding your seat, you know, keeping, try to keep that space that you, you know, your, your deepest space while you're doing all these other things, you know, it's be, being totally present. But, um, that's, so that's the meditation in action. That yeah. is the point in my Elizabeth talking. When we were there uh, last year, right? No, in February, January, February, first time in Harakan. Uh, like I told you that I never got a chance to uh, meet Babaji in a physical form. But uh, once we arrived in Harakan, we really felt the energy. Uh, I can't explain what is that. Uh, we're actually very happy to be there, looking forward for many, many years. A couple of experiences really is really interesting to me. One was that, you know, we were really settled in. We, took part in Arthi, it was beautiful. Uh, then we had a chance to, and I had a chance to take a bath in Gautam and Gange. And it was so refreshing, you know, after that. Then we went across that Gautam and Gange, you know, that temple, and there's one key, right, Gufa? So, I know the priest, we asked him, we'd like to meditate there, okay? We went in crawling, this small Gufa there, Use our uh, first light to go in. Then after that, me and my, my wife and I just went inside and okay, let's try some meditation. Okay, very quiet, no noise, beautiful. But we are free, we are feeling the energy. So okay, we'll do meditation. So we sat down. We did meditation, and it felt like it was only five or six minutes. We look at the watch; it's almost one hour. <laughs> wow. That was the experience. And then one other interesting thing was that there was one lady who used to conduct the Dunya Arti. So we all we went there. There was a small dog, black, puppy. I didn't notice that it was lovely there running around. So we went we wanted to take part in Dunya Arti. So we went there. Everything was settled in. We went and we sat down there in front of uh, Duni. Just before the Arti started, okay, he just went around that gate of Duni. Look at the mountain. It was and it was. It's not a barking as angry bark, but like kind of loving kind of bark. You know that dog puppy. And I didn't know what is that. Just before the Arti ha happened, and then we we actually wanted to hike out to that. Ma, uh, that mountain top, Kailas, Kailas yeah. where Baba's used to be. Yeah. So next, Dunya Arti, we also went there, right? And that dog, that lady was uh, conducting the Duni, she was taking care of the dog. So wherever she was going, the dog was going with her. S same thing happened just before the, the uh, Arti started. That dog went to the same room. Uh, you know, door <coughs> far outside of the dunya and look at the mountain and he started barking as he was calling and it was so peaceful the energy was so vibrant and and I just talked to him what is this you know like is he is he sensing something that we are not but we were sensing so peaceful so loving and we are so calm and we have nothing on our mind, no worries, no nothing. And then I, I thought, we thought, like for me especially, I never met him physically, but it doesn't have to be because the presence was there for me all the time. Okay. 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 Yeah, there was some, some experience that I just know that people have experienced. Uh, this is one that often, often I've heard about and I experienced a couple of times. You'd be hearing this music. I said, hey, where is this music coming from? And you try to pick up something on a radio or something was singing. There was never any source to it. 
It usually happens in the heat of the room in the morning or after a at night. I think sometimes though you get gullible in these um, spiritual surroundings and think, oh, I'm taking care of them. And maybe we were, but I remember there was this, this tiger one time was there. And he'd already killed somebody in the village up, up the north. This is way, this is in 78. It wasn't, it was winter time, not anybody there. And Babaji said something like, well, if a tiger comes, just, just uh, shine your flashlight in their eyes and they'll go away. And it's like, it made perfect sense. It's like, of course, that's what you do. You shine a flashlight in the tiger's eyes. It's just charging at you because you're walking across. And we lived, Tetsing and I lived across the river. We had to walk all in this darkness. And the only people that lived across the river, everybody else was in the ashram. But since Babaji said it, uh, we were ready and it wasn't tested. The theory wasn't tested, but it was like, okay, okay. So welcome to it. Flashlights, I'll get them every time. Just know about it. What you shared, AJ, is uh, very familiar uh, to Betty and I. Yeah. yeah. Um, I said that I went to Heracon in 83, and in 84, on Valentine's Day, uh, Betty and I went out for dinner, and we were talking and making plans, when can we go back to uh, Heracon? Me go back, but her first time. Um, so trying to make plans, and, uh, and then waking up the next morning and uh, hearing from our friend that Papaji had died. And from my perspective, it was as if everything just went up in dust. Um, uh, no more reason to go to Heracon, I thought. Uh, um, I, I went into a kind of a withdrawal for years and years, and to try to fill that, uh, we we went we started reading. For example, uh, for about ten years, we read uh, Resist Advaita uh, four or five times. Uh, we read uh, Ramana Maharshi, all the collected works. So we finally decided, well, why don't we go? to Arunachala and visit the, the ashram and the cave. And, uh, so we went there in, in uh, 2010, and while we were there, we went to the cave on Arunachala and had a very similar experience to what you described. We went into the cave, sat down and meditated. It was empty because we went early. Uh, when we opened our eyes, somehow the cave was filled with people. We didn't hear them come in or anything. We, we were just blessed out for who knows how long. But in the meantime, everyone populated the cave. Uh, so we, we were done, and so we uh, moved on. Uh, then we came back. Uh, that, that was around Christmas, Christmas holiday time, 2010. Came back, and uh, the experience of having been in that cave and just having gone through all the spiritual practice at the uh, Ramana Ashram for two weeks. Uh, coming back, it just left us empty. And uh, I scrambled and, and wondering, what can I do to fill in the emptiness uh, that was uh, vacant? And the first thing I came up to was going back to the Arte. Uh, I went back to all my old notes that I made on the RT and everything that I had typed out and got that all ready and computerized, and we started doing RT together every morning. Uh, so that uh, uh, it, it's amazing how much fullness, uh, emotion uh, can be generated by uh, the practice of. I, I didn't think of it as a mantra, but through through saying the RT. Singing the yeah. earth. That's the experience I have so deeply when I do the fire ceremony also. I really, like this morning, I was just feeling the mantras so much in my body. 
And when I opened my eyes, I saw all of you. It was interesting because I always thought the most people were there on making coffee. First of all, I was surprised to see all these hands offered. And then the next was that it was sort of like a time warp of seeing us as these yogis that we read about in, you know, and all of us read about in the Srimad Devi Bhagavata. It's like we were all here before doing these 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 mantras and these offerings. I don't know, it's just really a special moment. It's like, wow, this is something so beautiful. And there's a story in the Ramayana um, that I read, and I can't ever find it again. But it's about uh, Ram and Sita, uh, come, or maybe it's Ram when he's looking for, I can't remember the sequence, but I know Ram was there, and he went to some old, old ashram. And as he's walking through these forests, all of a sudden the forest turns golden, and the deer are golden. And everything, the flowers are just amazing, and the smell is so beautiful. He, he knows he's coming to a very sacred place. And it's a sacred place where these very old yogis are doing the pipe ceremony. And later they tell the story that they became so old and decrepit, they could not even walk down to the lake where they used to get the water for the fire ceremony. And the, the lake had magically just moved up right <laughs> next to the duny, so the just had to step out. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I made this story up when I was reading it. But, but I always think, I really, the ceremony, the RT, the Kavanya Babaji gave to us are not small situations. And they do transform the whole environment. So, certainly transform. It, it, it does go to the um, timelessness of the uh, of this Babaji community, and, and again, I think it's it's no uh, no accident that people uh, in such crazy diverse ways find themselves connected to this community. It's like I also have had that experience of sitting at a fire and having such a deep sense of, oh man, we've been doing this for a long time. This is just so ancient. So ancient, yeah. And I, um, that ancientness, Babaji's uh, presence, especially early on for me, he seemed like such a kid. And um, it was like really early on. This is like within the first days I met him. I hadn't had Chandan, and um, the uh, uh, the night before I, I took Chandan, we were in this very very small village in um, outside of Rindavan, uh, and um, he was playing around with the villagers. And I thought, you know, he's just this is just a kid, and. Uh, so the next morning, I went from Chandan, and, and he grabs my head, as he did in Chandan. And it's one of the things that was so interesting to have this kind of intimacy that Pana talks about. I mean, you, you were one-on-one. -on -one. So, anyway, so he took my head and kind of twirled my forehead and, and put his fingers across my my forehead, and it was like, <laughs> this is the oldest presence. It was just so clear. It was like you felt. It was like his fingers scraped through my, my, uh, my brain cavity. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't. I I have no explanation for this other than that I'm. I also am one of those that is the witness for. This Babaji community is beyond time and space. Uh, 
and it doesn't so much make sense to our rational minds. Um, and for some, that's really hard. That we're not organized, we don't have an idea or a, a particular ideal that we have to live up to. I mean, it's just in, in the uh, Hindu mythology, uh, people laugh at Shiva at the Shiva Darbar. Uh, the, the group is around Lord Shiva because it's, it's everybody who didn't fit in any place else. <laughs> <laughs> Shiva Darbar is, you know, just full of all these, you know, troublemakers. Troublemakers, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, that's a very, um, in some ways for me, it's, it's, uh, it's extremely wonderfully comforting uh, that in all these human systems that we find to be so important, um, and in the end, uh, in the given American politics, excuse me, uh, and given what humanity has done to the planet by living through ideologies and, and good ideas that are not really God ideas, but really good ideas, look what we've done to ourselves. And so I love, I, I love this stake in the Babaji community of, that says to us, be very careful about ideas that you think you want to live and die by. Um, where is that perfume that wants to transform any impulse into something that is a bit deeper, more humane, more caring. I remember, this, this kind of, these things go on and on. Right? So, at first in Heracom, we didn't have any toilets. And then we began to have toilets. The Indians, these are village people, thought they were such a novelty one night I walked into a bathroom and one of the village Matajis was squatted on the floor, not hitting the hole, just, just peeing on the floor. And it irritated me so much that I would have to be stepping into her ear and having to clean up after her. And so I expressed some frustration with the mother, with this, this old Mataji. And um, that was my idea, right? And uh, she immediately went to Babaji and I show up for, in the Darshan line later and you talk about being beaten, you know, Baba Jesus is <laughs> hollering at me saying, where are you? You have no right to treat this woman in this way. You have no right to be angry at anybody. And uh, so, I mean, it's, you can get around the sense that um, the depth of compassion that this path invites us into and the depth of, of of, of care for something so simple as moving rocks is so profound to me and so um, instructive for our times um, that we uh, we really um, uh, we really have a tradition that that gives pause to all the stuff that we're doing. all the stuff that's in our minds. Yeah. And what comes to me is is kind of the whole science of yoga. Uh. That and the theory, there is actually a theory behind these experiences and these things that can't be explained. <laughs> and one of those little pieces we were talking in about the buddhi. You know, there's, there's, according to yoga, there's four different parts to the mind. And there's the modern part of the mind that is that calculating, strategizing, planning, <laughs> organized part. And then there's a part that's the sense of I, the ego. Um, not necessarily in a bad way, but one sense of self. There's a collective of all of that. But then when you have these experiences, that there's that ancient knowingness. That's the buddhi part of the mind, and which actually lives in the heart. So it helps me that when you have these things that can't be explained, or there's just a, a right spot on knowing 
identification with something, um, that's the real intellect that is active. Yeah. Yeah. We get so caught in the mama's part, yeah. Yeah. the thinky part. You know, you're talking about like this. There's a great saying, it's, it's this name to Ajahn Ramos, a Buddhist teacher, and he says, Beliefs are nothing to be proud of. <laughs> when we spoke about Chandam, now when Babaji gave you the Chandam for the first time, that is really one of my experiences that I can actually call to mind that really brings me back to that love and space of Babaji. And um, going into his room and he would be sitting cross-legged on his bed and I would, you know, in front of him and he would take the hand, take her head. And for me, it always felt so, just so soft. And he would take his hands and do the chandra and brush your forehead and the dog and your eyes. But it was this. I was like, I have you. I have you forever. Mm -hmm. And for all of us, yeah. Love. There's nothing else. It didn't matter if I'd been good, bad, or indifferent that day. And, and I also think a lot of the karma yoga that we did, and sometimes we did, and we did, and we did, and then we chanted late, and then we had to get up early. And, and now that this lack of sleep also was a helpful thing for my mind to, to let go when I was just in that space, such as love. All you need is love. All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Love is all you need.